Last week, we talked about Jesus as a better high priest. Today, we're going to be talking about Jesus as a better high priest for you and for me as believers. How Jesus, as a permanent, eternal high priest, pays for our sins and brings us into a new covenant, a better covenant, gives us a better set of promises for you and for me. And we'll do that when we come right back. Hi, and welcome to Bible Study with Friends, where our goal is to help you get more impact from your Bible study. I'm here with my friend Jerry Duckett. And listen, this is a real Bible study. There's no script. There's no rehearsals. This is just two friends getting together and digging deep into God's Word. And if this is a blessing to you, please subscribe, hit the like button if it ministers to you, and be sure to share it with anyone else that you think this would be a benefit. Jerry and I were just talking off camera that a lot of Hebrews is hard to understand by a lot of people because we are so used to hearing and reading the Bible as if it was a Sunday school lesson. In other words, we're looking for surface stuff. We're looking for the easy thing. And Hebrews is a book that doesn't really let us do that. We need to dig deep into Hebrews and see what it really has to say. Now, the title of last week's message in the beginning of chapter 7 was, Jesus is a better high priest. And this was where it starts this section about Melchizedek, a better priest, because he is without beginning, without end, and he was or, or appointed by God directly, and that's a parallel with who Jesus is. We're going to get more of that today. But also the fact that Melchizedek was before the law. We talked about that last week, so if you missed that, go back and watch that video. It helps. And we're going to pick up this week in verse 23, and we're going to go from 723 through the rest of chapter 7 and all of chapter 8. And we're going to see, yes, Christ is a better high priest, but he's a better high priest for you and me. And we're going to start to see how this applies to us as believers today. You ready to get into that adventure, Jerry? I'm ready. All right. Let's get right into the Word and start at verse 23. He just got done talking about Jesus as a better high priest. Now he's going to come on with more explanation of that. In verse 23, he says, The former priests, that is, all these other priests that were under the law, on the one hand, existed in greater number because they were prevented by death from continuing. But Jesus, on the other hand, because he continues forever, he holds the priesthood permanently. The, talking about this theme of Melchizedek had no beginning and no end, and that's like Jesus, and he was before the law. And then he goes into in 23 and says, there have been a lot of priests. And the reason there are a lot of priests is because they die. Man, yes. And so you have to have another priest come along who's going to function as the high priest because they die. But Jesus doesn't. Jesus is eternal. And what that means is he gets to be permanently a high priest on our behalf. Right? Now, let's continue on. Does that make sense? Yes. So far? Okay. Then there's the word therefore in verse 25. It says, Be because he is a high priest permanently, Jesus is able to save permanently. He's, he's able to save forever. The Greek word there is he saves absolutely completely. So Jesus, because he is a permanent high priest, he can save us permanently, where the other priests, remember the high priest had to go in and do a temporary thing for the people and themselves because of their sin. Right. But Jesus comes in permanently because he is a permanent high priest forever. 
So this is this makes Jesus for us a better high priest because he permanently intercedes for us instead of temporarily like the other priests. Okay? Yes. He says, now, those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them, so he saves us and he's always there to intercede for our sins because he died on the cross for sins permanently. And then he lives forever to permanently intercede for us. That's a great assurance for us that I don't have a dead Messiah. I have a Messiah who is alive, sitting at the right hand of the Father, ready as ongoing forever to intercede for me. You see the benefit there? Yes. Way better than a priest who just does it temporarily for a day or for a year. Jesus does it permanently. Now we go on. Read 26 and 27. For it was fitting for us to have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separate from sinners, and exalted above the heavens, who does not need daily like those high priests to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. Now, if you're thinking about that, we have in Christ, who has a permanent high priest, this is a great high priest who was sinless. Remember, it talks there about that he's undefiled, he's, he's sinless. Because then he does not have to be a high priest who, like the other priests, have to offer for his own sins and the sins of the people. Jesus, because he is a sinless high priest, because he doesn't have to die for his own sins. Right. So he's a better high priest in that he's eternal, and he's a better high priest in that he is a sinless high priest that pays the price and intercedes for all of us permanently. Now let's go on to verse 27. He doesn't have to sacrifice for his own sins, just for the sins of the people. This he did once for all. Jesus dies for our sins once for all time. Now that becomes important because there are people that think every time they sin, they have to ask Christ into their life as Savior again. No, Jesus dies for all sins for all times. That's what he meant in John 19, verse 30, when he said, it is finished. All the payment for all the sins that had ever been committed, were being committed, and would ever be committed, were taken care of once and for all. What a promise. Now read verse 28. Okay. The law anoints men as high priests who are weak, but the word of the oath which came after the law appoints a son made perfect forever. So this is again reiterating that idea that under the law, the priests were temporary and, and they had to be replaced. But now we have a high priest that is forever, that is not just a priest. He is the son of God who is a priest forever because of what he's done. What an advantage for us. Then starting in chapter eight, let's go on with this. Now it's going to talk a little bit about the covenant. Now, automatically, when it starts talking about the covenant, Jerry, a lot of us get confused, but I'm going to try to straighten this out and make it clearer. And Jesus, I'm going to use Jesus' words to clarify this. Now, in verse 1, it says, Now, the main point in what has been said is this. So this is a, a summary. We have such a high priest who has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister in the sanctuary of God, and in the true tabernacle, which the Lord created, not man. In other words, the, te the regular temple, the tabernacle that was in the wilderness, man made that and pitched that tent. But Jesus is in a sanctuary that's eternal in heaven, sitting at the right hand of the Father, the true tabernacle, that is a forever tabernacle made by God. So we, you with me so far? 
Yes. Okay. And then it goes, verse 3, For every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices, so it is necessary that this high priest also have something to offer. So these high priests have to bring uh, guilt offering, grain offering, meat offering. There's a number of offerings they bring. Now it says, if he were on earth, he, now notice that he is capitalized. So this is, if God is on earth as a priest, he would not be a priest at all since there are those who offer the gifts according to the law. So God is not under the law. He's above the law. He created the law. So it says there, if he became a priest, he wouldn't be that kind of priest that was under the law. Verse 5, those priests serve a copy and a shadow of the heavenly things, just as Moses was warned by God that he was about to erect the temple, the tabernacle. He said, see that you make all things according to the pattern which was shown you on the mountain. In other words, he was instructed to, to follow an example of what the real tabernacle in heaven was going to be like. Yeah. So God is not under the law and these temporary priests. He is a creator of the law, and he, when he's on earth, he is above the law because he is a priest like Melchizedek without end, a priest forever not like the priests under the law. Okay? You with me? I'm getting there. Okay. Now, we continue on. I want you to read now from verse 6 down to verse 10. And I, I'm going to explain what you read, and we'll talk about that in, after you're done reading. So read from verse 6 to verse 10. Okay. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry by as much as he is also a mediator of a better, a better covenant, which has now, been... Now, pay attention. That word, better covenant. Now, keep going. Which has been enacted on a better promise. Promises. Better promises. Better promises. Yeah. Now, keep going. For if the first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no occasion to sought for a second. For finding fault with them, he says... Behold, days are coming, says the Lord, when I will erect a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judea, not like the covenant which I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. For they did not continue in my covenant, and I did not care for them, says the Lord. For this is a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their minds. I will write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Okay, now, under this little section, it's fairly easy to read once we get the perspective. God, through Jesus, is offering a better covenant and better promises than the law, the old covenant. God gave the law, the Mosaic covenant, from Moses. He prescribed all the law and then said, now you need to have priests to intercede for you under the law for your sins because you didn't keep that covenant or disobedient you sinned right then he goes on and he says i knew you would because i said you're going to disobey that covenant but i'm going to give you a new covenant now let's stop and think about this what's the new covenant the old covenant is the law what's the new covenant now uh, let's let's think back let's think back do you remember the last supper Jesus and the disciples. And when Jesus holds up the cup that represents his blood, just represents it, he says, this is the cup of the new covenant that I give in my blood. Yeah. So he, he basically announces 
that now, because of grace offered by Christ shedding his blood for the sins of everybody, that there is a new covenant, and the new covenant is grace. Romans 5, 8, the, even while we were enemies of God, Christ loved us and died for us. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace you've been saved through faith, not as a result of the works of the old law, but is a gift of God because of the new covenant of grace. It is a gift. So you follow me? You follow now the, the clarity he's giving of the priests are temporary priests of the old covenant. But once we have a better priest in the person of Jesus Christ, who comes to intercede personally and permanently forever for us sinners, that does away with the old covenant of the law and gives us this great new covenant, which he says at the very beginning of chapter 8, is a better covenant. Right. It's better promises because the old covenant promises were you have to obey the law to be blessed. But the new promises is you could have grace through Christ Jesus, the grace to live, the grace to realize that your sins have been forgiven forever. That's a much better covenant. Gotcha. Does that make clear? Yes. So now when you read that, those verses about the old covenant was not that great, and they broke it. But now there's a new covenant that covers all sin, and that covenant is in the person of Jesus, which is forever. That's fantastic. What a promise that is for us. And, and the, the results, in verse 10, he says something very interesting. He says, this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, in other words, after this permanent high priest, I will put my laws into their minds, and I will write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they should be my people. In other words, the, the law is not going to be some written rules. Right. It's going to be something that's in your heart that the Holy Spirit, now we know that when we become Christians, the Holy Spirit comes into us and teaches us how to be obedient to God. And God's promise was under the new covenant, this better covenant under Jesus, I'm not going to have to write down the laws. I'm going to put the laws in your heart and in your minds, and I'll be your God and you'll be my people under the new covenant through Christ. Now let's go on. Let's finish this out. 11, this is a tough one for me. All right, let's look at that. Go ahead. Read, they, read they, from 11 to 13. Okay. And they shall not teach everyone his fellow citizens and everyone his brothers, saying, Know the Lord, for all will know me. All right, let's stop there now for a second. Let me explain this a little bit. He's saying, under the new covenant, what he just got done saying in verse 10 was he's going to put this better covenant directly into our hearts because we're believers. And he says, there's not going to be the need for a priest to teach you the law because you're going to know me, okay? Now, he's not saying that people aren't going to teach the new covenant. They will. We have all kinds of teachers. Paul, Jesus was a teacher for that matter. But he's saying, under the old covenant, you're not going to have priests who teach you what it means. You're going to have an indwelling Holy Spirit because you know me. You're not going to need those kind of teachers. You're going to have a new teacher in the form of the Holy Spirit. And J Jesus said that in John 14 when he says, I'm going to send you a helper and he will teach you all things. Now, the, the Holy Spirit can use human teachers, but it's not the same as a priest where in the past, under the law, if you wanted to know how to act, you went and asked the priest, how do I act? Where now, under the new covenant, the better covenant, God is actually indwelling us, and he's in our hearts and in our minds and speaks directly to us. Okay, does that help that a little bit? It's getting there. Okay, let's go back. Keep reading. Go from verse 12. For I will be merciful to their iniquities, 
and I will remember their sins no more. That is basically saying that I'm going to come in, and every believer will know me. That's in verse 11. It says, and from the least to the greatest, there's going to be no special believer. All believers are going to have the same Holy Spirit. They're all going to know me. The same Holy Spirit's going to teach them. And then it says, because, that word for means because, I'm going to be merciful for their sins, their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. Now, that's huge for us who, every time we commit a sin and we continue to sin, First John makes that clear, that we don't have to feel guilty. Oh, we're no longer a believer. No, he died for our sins once for all, and he will remember our sins no more. So confession just means, I agree, God, that I, what I just did was a sin. Thank you that you forgave those sins, that you died for my sin, my iniquity, and that you don't remember those sins anymore because they're wiped out because of what you did on the cross. That's a better high priest, man, that doesn't have to give us a temporary reprieval from sin. That ties back in to, I will write them on their hearts. Yeah, the, the Holy Spirit's going to indwell them. And the reason it is because I'm merciful for their sins, and I'm not going to remember their sins anymore. And there, we have verses where God says, I'm going to separate them from their sin as far as the east is from the west. I will remember their sin no more. God is not going to remember our sins because they're paid for by our eternal high priest. So in verse 13, when he said, a new covenant, he has made the first obsolete. In other words, the covenant of the law, you're going to die because you're a sinner under the law, is now obsolete. But whatever is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to disappear. He's making the point with verse 13 that this better covenant, the better promises that we have in this section, is the grace that's offered by a high priest who dies forever for our sins, and he will indwell us believers forever, and he will forever forget our sins and will remember our sins no more forever. So the new covenant of the high priest who is a forever sinless high priest makes the old covenant of the law obsolete. Now, if you want more on that, you read Romans. Paul makes the point over and over again that right. grace has replaced the law of works, the law of I've got to earn it. I've got to do all this stuff. So this is a theme that we get in the book, and it all starts with Jesus as a better high priest for you and me. Okay? That's good. That clarify this covenant, the old covenant, the new covenant. It helped a lot. And so we can praise God that we have a new covenant in the person of Christ who dies for our sins forever and forgives us forever. When he said it is finished, he meant it is finished. There's no more punishment for sin. As Christians, now as non-Christians, that's a different thing. But he's talking here to believers, talking about the believer's new covenant in a high priest who is a high priest forever and a better high priest for each of us. Today, we've been talking about Jesus as our high priest, as a better high priest for you and for me as believers. And I want to recommend a video to you. It's called Jesus is Not a Cuss Word, and it's out of the Systematic Theology series, it basically explains who Jesus is, the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And I think it'll be a blessing to you. And listen, we're going to continue in our study in Hebrews in the next chapter, next week. And until then, God bless you.